welcome uh, to another presentation, another teacher training for uh, by Donald L. Potter, and this is sponsored by the DonPotter.net uh, website. And there is an old picture of me. And to get to my page, my handwriting page, you will click Welcome to Education page, then click on handwriting and there you have a picture of me back in 2012 teaching a handwriting lesson and the documents you're going to be interested in are shortcut to cursive um, not going to go to it but it's right there fundamentals of cursive and I'm basically going to be calling uh, following the fundamentals of cursive in this uh, presentation and um, there's an essay here by Sam Blumenfeld entitled Cursive First, Should We Teach Our Children? How Should We Teach Our Children to Write Cursive First, Print Later? And I've added some things to this explaining why that I believe cursive is so important, in particular with kids who might have a tendency towards dyslexia. At the school where I teach, we began teaching kindergarten, I mean uh, cursive in kindergarten, and have been very successful. In fact, my school's had uh, the last several years uh, students of one na uh, national handwriting competition. I'm very proud of our students and our program. But the main document we're going to be looking at here today is Fundamentals of Cursive, which you can access there on my website. And I'm just going to show you. We'll go through the alphabet. You can't see it all on this, I know, because I, unless I was to reduce the. Um, I don't know if I can. There we go. And we got most of it on the page there. So you can see uh, how we teach the alphabet, all the connecting strokes. And in particular, you'll want to look at the section at the end here where that I've actually written all this. And we're going to be going through this um, right now with me actually writing the letters because that's the best way to learn. So this you can run this off uh, and then follow along on the video that we're going to do right now. So let's get out of um, uh, Safari there. Now we're back to our page here that we're going to be writing on to teach you cursive. By the way, I'm experiencing a little swelling in my right hand. I broke my wrist earlier this year and had a middle plate put in. So um, I've experienced a, it's a little bit difficult for me to uh, write properly, but I think I can do good enough to um, for this training video. Let's take a look uh, very quickly at the uh, the uh, all of cursive handwriting, at least uh, slant cursive, which we're going to be teaching, is based on an oval. You can go around an oval counterclockwise, or you can go around the oval clockwise. And it can be divided up into four sections. If we go counterclockwise, we can have what's called an undercurve. UC is my abbreviation. If we go down, excuse me, continuing counterclockwise, we now have what I call a down curve. And if we go the other way, we go clockwise, we can have going up here, we have an over curve. And if we go from one apex to the other, we have a S, which stands for slant. So we have an under curve, down curve, over curve, and a slant. And all of our cursive letters are going to be based on this. And this really simplifies the teaching of handwriting, cursive, and helps the students understand these basic concepts. So let's take a look what they look like by themselves. Here we have an over curve. And I'll just write down here OC. Here we have an under curve. And I'm going to put under curve. Here we have a down curve. 
and here we have our slant of course you don't put the arrows on there when you're writing but this just shows you the direction we're going now we also need a connect stroke and a connect stroke goes like this okay and I call that a connect stroke then we have uh, some loops this is called a loop back and then we have two loops going this way or going this way which I call loop forward and then we also have I want to show you this this is the hook and I'm just going to use an H for that okay that's a hook now we're going to go right straight through the alphabet as quickly as we can I don't want this video to last too long by the way uh, your students will generally be using a regular number two pencil like this one and it's very important there should only be one finger on top this is called a tripod grip and it's the best and you want this web right here so that the students can have all this motion which takes the stress off of the arm some students will hold down like this so they have to and this is why they're looking at their paper sideways instead of setting up straight so make sure they're not you don't want clear up here but you want right close to the wood two other uh, writing instruments I use this is um, a uh, J I N H R O fountain pen and I buy these on the internet and I get uh, uh, I get um, I think eight of them for like eleven dollars and I use the uh, filler and you can get a uh, I get washable ink since I'm using these with kids as young as kindergarten and I like these because they're flat on both sides. These are really valuable. Or you can get one like this um, that I use here at home. And we'll be doing some of our writing with those pens later on so you can see how they so you can see how to use them and see how they work. Okay. Now let's get to going here. We're gonna do an A. And let me get this up where you can see it good. The A is going, and we're going to use two lines in order to teach this so you can see it good. We're going to do a, the A is, we're, okay, so we're going to have the letter A here, and it's going to be a down curve, an under curve, a slant, and an under curve. And I sometimes put a plus sign to show the kids, get a little lead out there. Here we have a down curve, under curve, slant, under curve, and that's an A. Now the trick is to know how to combine letters. And this I find is where the kids are having the most problem. So here's where I teach a hook. We're gonna use the hook that we learn up here. So we're here we're gonna do down curve, under curve, slant, under curve, hook. Now let me show you how that's going to work. To connect two A's, we're going to have down curve, under curve, slant, over curve, hook. Then we do another down curve, under curve, slant, under curve. And again, you can keep writing A's on and on and on. The capital A is simply going to be like this. Now there are two alternative ways to do the A's. And if you're using a I'm going to show you this way, which is the same as the Abeka handwriting, only using the oval. Abeka does not use the oval in initial teaching like this, but I find it very valuable. So what we're going to do is uh, two other ways to form the A. One is starting with an undercurve, like that, okay. And the other is starting with an overcurve. Either of these is good. I think I kind of prefer that one. The advantage of teaching with an over curve, starting up with an over curve or an under curve, is that you can really dispense with this because the first time you write the letter, you got the hook built in. So this is kind of easier to teach starting out. And if your uh, handwriting method, Danielian and others, 
use this particular stroke. I have no problem with it. Dyslexia teachers will often say that all the letters start on the line, and that is true if you use this form. But if you use this form, they don't all start on the line. You may ask, well, why are you starting yours this way? Because I am at a school that teaches the Abeka handwriting method, and I, all my work there is to support that particular method, and so I've adopted it. And it's uh, basically the same form that I learned when I was a kid. Now we're going to our next letter, and this is going to be a B. And it's going to be, I'm not going to write that all out. It is on my paper where I actually write out all the strokes. But it's going to be an under curve, loop back. Did you catch that? Loop back. Remember we taught uh, up here? Loop back, slant, under curve, connect stroke. So there is your B. Now the trick is how to connect an A to a B. And so to teach that to the students, we're going to go, we're going to teach the hook. Under curve, loop back, slant, under curve, connect stroke, and then we do the hook. Okay? And when we put the letter with it, it's going to look like this. Under curve, loop back, slant, under curve, connect stroke, hook. And then we do a down curve, under curve, slant, under curve. You can also do two Bs that way, under curve, loop back, slant, under curve, connect stroke. And then you do a, a under curve, loop back, slant, under curve, connect stroke. I want you to notice that on the on the the um, all the letters, the slant starts here and it stops here. You don't form, and we'll do this out to the side, you don't make an L like this, folks, because that is not a slant, okay? Instead, you come around and we come down for the slant, and you want stop points. You want the ballistics to the thing. You want to go from here straight to here. If you teach your student, and then you can also take, and you can draw lines like this to check your letters, and you should have the same distance between here and the same distance between here. So when you get done writing a whole page, you should be able to go through and, and you can do the same thing. You notice how on the A here we have a slant. Um, okay, the capital B is going to be like this. And you can connect the next letter if you want to. Now we're ready for the C. And the C as we do it, and I better watch my paper here, make sure I'm getting it all right. Uh, we are 12 minutes into this, so I'm going to have to start pushing to get done um, as quickly as I can and yet still cover all the strokes. The C is simply a down curve, under curve, okay? Down curve, under curve. And I, all this is on my document, funda uh, where's Matt here? Fundamentals of Curse. If you download that document and run it off, you'll be able to see how it works with it, along with this video, and you'll be able to teach. Now, to do two Cs, what we're going to do, we're going we're gonna to bring in the hook again. So we're going to do a down curve, under curve, hook, okay? And then to put two Cs, we have down curve, under curve, hook, down curve, under curve. We can also do a C and an A. All right. Uh, since I like to have the kids write the whole alphabet without picking up the pencil in their practice, um, and you can see this especially in my shortcut to cursive, uh, we're going to do a B, under curve, loop back, slant, under curve, connect stroke, hook, and then we do a down curve, under curve. Now we have B, C, so we can do A, B, C, okay? And we can also do um, A, C. We'll do that. And a capital C, you can, with or without a hook, however you want to do it. If you want to put a little hook, you can. And the C will look like that, and it connects to the next letters. Uh, I can actually write the word C, hook, A, B. Maybe some of you like jazz, you remember Cab Calloway. Okay, we're going to go to the D now. And the D is very similar to the A, except when we do the 
um, under curve we're going to take it all the way up so here we go so now we have down curve under curve slant under curve did you get that mine came out mm, pretty good we can do two d's down curve under curve slant uh, slant notice the slant goes from here to here without picking up the pin but you don't stop till you get down to here and then we come up with another hook down curve under curve slant so there we have a D and a D the capital D uh, I like because it's in my name and it's going to look like this more or less some people don't round that they make it a little bit straighter however you want to do it or however your uh, however your program works oh I forgot on this uh, on the D and I forgot on the C I'll go back and fix that uh, alternative strokes you can do an uh, uh, you can do an under curve to make a D or you can start the D with an over curve not much difference between the two but this is probably a little bit more fluent the C also, and let me squeeze them in here real quick. You can also do a C with an under curve, or you can do it with an over curve. If your program does that, that's fine. I want you to see, I want this fundamentals of cursive to be principles that can apply to any handwriting program out there to improve uh, the fluency. The E is an interesting letter. It's an undercurve, loop back, slant, undercurve. And I'm sure you've seen people make an E like this. Let me show you. Right? But if you look at that, that is not, in, by any way, shape, or form, a slant. This, the way I did it, that is a true slant. And that's what we want on the letter E. Undercurve, loop back, slant, undercurve. All right? Um you can hook the E all oh, the one of the most important things to teach you now is how to go from a B to an E and so we're going to do a B under curve loop back slant under curve connect stroke and then all you do you say loop back slant under curve and again notice how my two slants are what makes writing look good that's is um, B and uh, you can also, we'll just for fun, I'll do an A and an E, and an E and an A, and uh, capital B is very similar to a printed B. No, oh, see, I'm doing a E, aren't I? Oh, well, let me, let me erase that. We'll get it, get it, get an E here for you. Okay. By the way, I'm not following a script right now. I'm just teaching this um, and if I wanted to write the word ed I would do the hook and write like that okay uh, next is F watch the F very carefully the F is an under curve loop back now watch we have a slant loop forward under curve and you remember I said there were two loop forwards and that was one of them right there you're looping forward this way and I see the kids often form their letters they'll go this way and then they go this way and that is wrong and I see it all the time so as a teacher if you teach it right the first time and you make sure every single student gets it right you'll have no problem by the way a handwriting teacher is a teacher who walks around the class a lot and I've taught cursive to as many as 25 student, uh, well, 25 second grade students, and several times to, uh, well, other second grades, not quite that big. And they all did good because I made sure they got it right the first time. I had them write an F. I say, write three of them. I walk around the class. I look at every single paper. You cannot teach handwriting sitting at a teacher's desk. I promise you, you're going to have to. And if a t student don't get it, you can actually take your hand around their shoulder, right shoulder, if they're right-handed, and write on their paper so they can see it as though they're looking right down at your hand. Okay, there's our F and the capital. There's two ways to do a capital here. I'll show you both of them. The Abeka way, they do a loop like this. 
and then you come um, you come down and then up like that and you draw a line or the way I learned to do it when I was a kid well I actually made that taller than I should have but you got the idea and then when I was a, when I was growing up we made our F's like that okay so you got a choice there this is the Abeka way and it's a little bit faster because you don't have to pick up your pencil but the G okay just hang in here with me we're moving on through the alphabet the G is going to be a down curve under curve slant now watch this loop back over curve you want to hear that again down curve under curve slant loop back over curve and you want to go from there straight down from the top to the bottom with a straight line make sure your students are getting a straight line sometimes they, they get it all messed up and you want it to look good like that uh, to connect two G's you're going to do down curve under curve slant loop back and then notice how you do your hook down curve under curve slant loop back over curve uh, let's do a G and an E to show you how that works you just loop back like that and the capital G is a very nice letter and you can connect to the next letter if you care to the H is one of the easier letters but again you're gonna to have to make sure they get their slant it's loop under curve loop back slant then it's over curve slant under curve you don't want your letter let's see what see if you can see it here you don't want your letter looking like that okay that is not a slant you want it to come back like this and again if you draw your slant lines like that they should be the same distance right there okay um, that's the H and there's nothing special about that you can c connect an H with an A or an H with an E then the capital is just simply a loop like that and then you come down and up and around and if there's a letter after it you connect it like the word he uh, and you can if it's an A again you do a loop like that it gives you kind of an idea okay so we made it through the H I'm sure that's going to be very helpful to parents that are seeking to teach their kids cursive or teachers that want to improve their cursive instruction now we're going to uh, HI the I right okay here we go the I is very simple under curve slant under curve dot again notice the I just should not look like this okay because that is not a slant you want a slant just like the one I did now letters that we need to know is do a B and an I under curve loop back slant under curve connect stroke and then you do a slant under curve and that gets your B and your I the other ones such as E I is pretty easy A I etc the capital two ways to do a capital I do it this way I go around that away down and then I finish and I don't connect with the next letter a lot of people prefer to do it this way where they do they go up and then around um, and then they come up and then they'll connect connect to the, the, the next letter um, for, um, I'm not going to go ahead and finish that we haven't had those letters yet so this is the way I do an I I start right here and I'm going to put a one there and some people start here and I'll put a one there so whichever you care to do I think this is a little bit better okay next is uh, H I J J is um, an under curve slant loop back over curves you get that under curve slant loop back over curve and if the students will go straight from all the way down they're gonna get a, a nice slant right there 
and all the slants on all the letters notice how we have slants up here on the B and on the the I okay so um, we'll do a J this is a little bit tricky because you're coming from way down here and then you're coming all the way up J A and a J E and I'll go ahead and do a J I now the capital is you, just, you go forwards and the kids sometimes have trouble with this when you get to the bottom you loop forward okay that's not my best J but you get the idea that's a little bit better and then if there's a letter after it you go like that connect them J now we're ready for the K are you ready K um, K is pretty tricky here and uh, looking for my some of my notes on this um, you're going to do an under curve loop back slant over curve and then what you do is you hook around or loop around like that hook around then you slide right and you do an under curve okay that's the K um, and the capital is like this K E D CAD whatever that is okay just putting some letters together there the way people do names today I suppose that is a name next one we're going to do under curve loop back slant see this is an L under curve okay under curve loop back slant under curve and it's important to be able to connect the B and the L because you're gonna have under curve loop back slant under curve connect stroke then loop back slant under curve so you have a B and an L and you can make it then the capital L is like this and my middle my brother's middle name was Lee so I'll just put Lee mine's Lee Roy but I haven't had an R yet have we okay now we got an M which is over curve slant over curve slant over curve slant under curve and can you see how those slants come out so now we um, and uh, we can just write the word AM for a word the capital has a loop and comes down like this this might be a good place for me to mention on all these letters the slant takes more room on a line it's more fluent it looks better when you have to squeeze letters on a line you can teach the students to go to a more vertical slant and I will just I'm going to write the word M in vertical slant to give you what I'm idea what I'm well it's vertical not vertical slant but vertical letters verticals and a slants two different things but anyway contradiction so here we so we do an A and then we do an M and you can see it looks nice I don't think it's quite as good as this it looks nice and you can scrunch these letters up and so you can put like almost twice as many words on a line this away so like when you're writing in the margins of a book or something you may want to switch to a more vertical alignment as opposed to the slant alignment okay and there are some methods a uh, handwriting without tears for example teaches this vertical uh, it's been in in and out of favor the last over 100 years uh, but I think that um, the conclusion is that the slant has distinctive advantages as far as fluency goes then we have an N. It's don't need to take long on that. Over curve, slant, over curve, slant, under curve, and then the capital. It's basically the same, but it's going to come like, like that. O. We're going to have to spend some time on O. So let's get on this and get to moving fast. O is going to be down curve, under curve, connect stroke. Now Becca puts a loop there, and I call it itty bitty loop. For my students down curve under curve itty bitty loop connect stroke okay can you see how small that is what I do not like 
and I will I get upset about this although I know a couple handwriting methods that use it but I think it I do not like it and that is when they're writing they'll kind of make the loop like that now that's called an O because it has a loop but to me it looks like an A okay because it goes down to the line so as far as I'm concerned I don't want to see that and I will not accept that from my students but I do know some handwriting methods that actually use that I have no idea why they didn't consult me but anyway and then when you connect the O to another letter you're going to use the um, hook again so for example we're going to use several examples here here's two O's notice you do a hook and you come back uh, OA again we're going to go O we do a hook then we do an, an A the OE are we still on the line here the OE will be like this and so you do a loop back slant under curve just like we did with the B and the E or the B and the L let's do an O and an L the O skip a line here the O and the L will look like that O N O M now you can see how the letters connect O C O D OF's a tricky one. O F. Notice how it comes off of there. OK. And let's see, I need to do an O and an I. An O and an I. And I didn't put the loop. If I put the little, little bitty loop, it'll go like that, OK? Oh, well, let's do a G too. Here's an O and a G. In a minute, we'll do an O and a P, and I'll show you how that works too. Now, uh, O, M, N, O, P is under curve, slant, loop back, over curve, and then we loop around. And that is not my best. This, I hope, will come out a lot better. It is better. Let me say now that uh, I didn't learn to write a P that way. The way I wrote a P when I was a child, we would do an under curve, slant, then we do an over curve, and then we would loop around like that. This is probably much easier, and my tutoring students from the public schools, when I teach them cursive, I will teach that one. But at my school, I teach this, because this is the a Becca way. Uh, Palmer also used this. And this is a fluent way to write. There's nothing wrong with it. It just takes, maybe takes a little bit more practice. And then we have a P capital, as in my name, Potter. And then what I want to do is an O and a P. The O, we'll do a little bit of loop. Now here's a trick. Then you come down and you loop around like that. And if you use this particular form and notice even with these you still want a nice slant okay we're going to do an O and then this would be the way I would do it when I was a child OP like that and while we got a little room here on the page let's do a Q down curve under curve slant loop forward under curve I didn't have it where you could see it too good let me do it again down curve under curve slant loop forward under curve and we can do two Q's for you. Q, then you do a hook. Q, and again, you want to watch your slants there. Capital Q, we got a couple alternatives. One is kind of like a two, but goes like that. Or just write a regular Q. And a lot of, a lot of cursive methods today actually went to that when a lot of kids can't read this but it can be connected to the next letter. Okay, pressing on. We're almost done with the alphabet here. Let's switch and use our uh, Janajo fountain pen. What do you say? And this, by the way, I load with um, ink that I get. Uh, I get washable ink so that my little kindergartners, if they get ink, they usually will touch the tip when they start out. If they get ink all over them, it'll come off. 
and also come off their clothes and keeps the parents happy. Uh, and R, the way I do it, the way I teach it, and when, and uh, by the way, these pins are, it's called J-I-N-H-R-O, and boy, I love them. And the, the, the top is flat and the bottom is rounded, so it helps them to put their pin, fingers on there, right? And you don't have to press hard with a fountain pen, so this helps kids develop a light uh, a light grip. Plus, it's just kind of fun to use. Um, oh, you know what? I need to go back talking to myself. There were two ways to do the O, which I didn't do, and that is uh, you can do an under curve, or you can start it with an over curve if you want to. The same thing, the Q can start with an under curve, or it can start with an over curve. Okay, so if you're using one of those uh, handwriting methods, you can see the alternative strokes. I meant to show you that when we were going through. All right, pressing. We're at, we're at the half hour marks, hour marks, so I've got to hurry up here. Uh, the R is going to be an under curve, slide right, slant, under curve. I find this to be the easiest. The Abeka will teach an undercurve, and then they put a little point on it right there. But I find the kids going like this or something, and this seems to be a little bit easier. This is what I teach, and I've never had the teachers complain. It looks really nice. I do not like the R to go across like that, and I also will not accept an R like that, okay? Those are not acceptable. And this is the one that I really... Um, I really like now the trick with the this R is connect going to be to connect it with a B or an O so let's go ahead and demonstrate under curve loop back slant under curve connect stroke now to do the R you do you do your uh, connect stroke then you slant right slant under curve so there is the B and the R and the O and the R is going to be exactly the same thing so there you have BR and OR. Not that hard, but you need to show it to the kids. And then the capital R is going to be under curve, slant, and then you're going to go around like this. And that's not the best, but that's good enough for now. You get the idea. S is a tricky letter for kids. Uh, it's going to be, make sure you can see it. Uh, it's going to be an under curve, and then we're going to slant down and then have an under curve. What you want is you want a sharp point on there. The kids will tend to go like this, okay? That's not what you want. So teach them to do an under curve. Some people say retrace. You actually retrace a little bit of it, tie it in, and then come up like that. And I've got a little better details on my uh, fundamentals decursive. Uh, the two letters that you're going to have trouble with a B is a B and an S. And the kids, have, it's not that hard, but you have to demonstrate it, okay? So you can see, they'll tend to come all the way back. You don't want to come all the way back on your connect stroke. And then an O and an S also. You have an O, and then you have an S like that. Uh, the capital S is a very pretty letter. Like that. And you can connect to the next letter if you want to. T, let's make sure we get this T right. Under curve, slant, under curve, lift, slide right. And I always like to say slide right because I don't want the students going backwards. Anything backwards could make you look at the letter backwards. One time I was teaching a kindergarten class and I told the teacher, I said, watch, I went to the board and I pointed to the words from, this to, from the left side and they actually read them backwards. And the teacher and I was both kind of shocked. Uh, so where you stand when you teach a kindergartner is actually very important. Uh, I want to show you how not to do a T. You do not want a T to look like that, okay? Because that is not a slant. Again, you want a nice slant like that. So it's going to be under curve, slant, under curve, lift, and slide right. Or you can say cross. You can say cross for that one. Uh, the O and the T is very important, so we're going to do a down curve, under curve, then we do our connect stroke, and then the T goes up and down like 
like that. Um, the capital T, you have two choices. One, the Abeka way is more or less just about like the the F, you know. But the way I learned when I was a kid was is more like this. I kind of like this a little faster. Uh, however, your handwriting prayer does it, or however you'd like to do it, everybody kind of uh, develops their own. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, seven more letters. Let's see how fast I can do this. Uh, the W, no, let's see, T. Okay, use next. I'm in too big a hurry. Under curve, slant, under curve, slant, under curve, connect stroke. Again, notice those slants. They're very important. Uh, we'll do a few letters. The U and then the S. I did that all wrong, didn't I? I'm thinking a W. It's going to be under curve, slant, under curve, slant, under curve. There you go. I may redo this someday. Uh, it's what time is it? It's uh, nine o'clock on Sunday evening, so I'm kind of, kind of pushing to get this done. I've been wanting to do it for a long time. Um, so now for an S, you're going to do under curve, slant, under curve, slant, under curve, and then the S will come back like that in us. And again, um, U E. And the U A. And let's do a B and a U. That's a can be pretty tricky. Connect stroke, and then you just come down like that. Okay, so you got B U, and the capital U is a nice letter, like that. And let me see if I can do you a better one. There, that's better. And you can connect to the uh, letter that comes after. That's a little bit better there. The V is uh, over curve slant under curve connect stroke did you get that over curve slant under curve connect stroke and then you got uh, uh, it's just like all the others uh, connect strokes where like if you have an A you have to do a hook and then you'll come back uh, a W man I should have stopped let's do that again V, then A, and A, B, and what else do I want to put? E, a V, I, a V, O, and a V, U. Okay. Now, the W, which I started to write up here when I lost track of what I was doing, is going to be um, under curve, slant, under curve, slant, under curve, connect stroke. Okay, there we got the W now. And to connect again, you're going to do the hook. And then whatever letter it's going to be, for example, W, A, uh, W, O. Now, the E and the I will be like this. W, loop back, slant, under curve. And the W, I, slant. Okay, uh, let's try a W, H. That's another important combination. We Can you all still see me? Uh, w, H, W, R, under curve, slant, under curve, slant, under curve. And then the R is going to be slant right like that. W R W S and the W N. Some good examples of all of that. The X is pretty simple. Over curve, slant, under curve. It's like the V without the connect stroke. And then you draw a line down. I think some some programs go up I go down uh, and the just one word we'll do is O X I want you to see how you come off the O kind of with a little bit of a hook like that and then and then X the capital the way a Becca does the capital is they come down this way and then they make a loop 
and they connect to the next letter if there is another letter and there aren't very many words that start with an X you're not going to see that very much the Y is let's go to our last sheet of paper here and I got some more paper I can put underneath how you like this fountain pen it works pretty good don't it uh, for a two dollar fountain pen I'd say it's uh, it pretty good the Y is uh, under curve slant under curve slant loop back over curve okay and again notice your nice slants right there um, and um, let's do a by this might be a little bit tricky B Y you see how we how we form that uh, coming off of there with a uh, a slant uh, boy let's write boy B O and then see how the Y comes off of the O there is an uh, the capital is going to be like this by the way did I do a I uh, didn't do a I forgot to do a capital V the capital V is like like that and capital W we did the X the capital W I forgot this is the way I like to do the W some people do it like that and I think why would you want to write a W like that when you can write a nice one like that so that right there is the way Don Potter likes to do a W. Let me make sure you can see me write it again. I may not have had my hands just right. There you go. That's a W. All right. You ready for the last letter? I am. It's about my bedtime here. Uh, we're going to do a Z. We have um, over curve slant, over curve slant, loop back, over curve. That's right. Notice that the that this one is lower than this one. Also notice that you have two slants involved here that you want to make sure you get right. So we have uh, let me do it again. Over curve slant, over curve slant, loop back, over curve. Uh, let's do a couple letters here. I'm going to do an A and a Z to show you how this works. A Z O now here's a tricky one O Z Z A Z E make sure you got it where you can see that uh, two Z's would look like this Z Z and uh, let's see, we get a capital Y and a capital Z. is like that. And you can connect with the uh, next letter. Now what we're going to do, I like the kids to do this. I like to get where they can do it actually with their eyes closed. And I'm going to do it with my eyes open. But this is called the alphabet string, and I'm going to show you exactly how you want your students to do it. Okay, we got it here good so you can see everything. Okay, here we go. So here we go. I'm going to try and put it on one line. I may have to use two, but here we go. A. I like to say the letters B, C, D, E, F, G, H. I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S. Let's slip down a line. T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Now you go cross cross dot dot um, let's see we're about done one thing I forgot to show you the Y and I believe this will be complete my program and I think I've got everything covered real good the Y 
there's two ways to do it why my way is under curve slant under curve slant loop back over curve the other way that's extremely popular and chances are good your program will do it this way which again is just fine with me um, here we're going to do an over curve slant under curve slant loop back over curve so you can see the difference here this one starts with an under curve and comes up this starts with an over curve going up with an over curve so they're very similar this is quite all right I have no problem with that it looks just fine either one of them is fine I used uh, I didn't my X I used this kind of Y right here all right well I'm going to say uh, so long and I wish you the very best in your um, teaching of cursive. I hope it becomes a joy for you as it has for me and also my students. I think this will serve the purpose. There were a couple little rocky places in there. I would have liked to have taken time and had a script, but I'd rather get this to you now than wait a, a year or two to try to get everything just perfect.